Hello Thingsters, uh, I'm Clem and today I'm going to show you how to run your Python script in the cloud at a specified time interval. This is a super powerful way of running your Python, your Python code outside of your own machine and obviously as you probably know it's used every day, every single second by, uh, by companies and by individuals for example on uh, AWS, on uh, Google Cloud Services, uh, but also on, on smaller uh, providers like Python Anywhere and, uh, and Heroku. And speaking of which, I'm going to use a Heroku today because I used it in the previous tutorial and that's a, a good way to continue the work we've been doing before. So, um, you will you, you will see it will be a familiar ground for you because I will be using using Heroku and I will be using the is Gmail script uh, so the is Gmail module that by now you you should be familiar with uh, as a quick reminder this is uh, a module uh, with Python that enables you to manage an email account for example you may automate sending emails to to clients or do pretty much everything you want, but this is a personal project that I'm showing you now. Um, so I, I prepared, uh, as you could see in the article, I prepared this uh, this directory, my first schedule, scheduled script. Uh, for now, it's not git tracked yet, as you can see. And I, I'm now going to go through all the steps necessary to uh, actually put your Python code into the cloud and then uh, define a trigger to, to run it at specified time intervals. So first, let's see what do I have in there. I have two um, ezgmail specific files, namely credentials.json and the token.json. So these ones um, are just used to uh, connect to the Gmail account and they need uh, you setting up um, the account beforehand. I did this in a previous tutorial. For example, uh, well, actually, I, I can't really cut them for you, but credentials.json is uh, like a Python dictionary and it... Uh, and it displays some uh, encrypted data that allow you to connect. I then prepared uh, a requirements.txt. Uh, you could see in the article, I used the uh, echo is a Gmail and put that into requirements.txt, meaning uh, the only uh, outside, uh, not, I mean, not built in module uh, that will be used in this um, tutorial is, is a Gmail. So you can see if I cut it, you can see that. There is only one to download, so this is a very, a very light um, project, and I know that we won't have any worry pushing it into the cloud. Into the cloud, even if with a free plan, we are limited to 500 megabytes as a slug size. Then our main file uh, is called scheduledscript.py, and this one I'm gonna show you vs. So VS, uh, you may not find it on your own machine because this is a command that I uh, created. I tailored it and it, uh, it means Visual Studio. So now whenever I press VS, it opens Visual Studio on the current directory tree level, which is quite useful. So you can see on the left, I have uh, the files in this current project, my first scheduled script. Um, so it's a very short script because uh, this is mainly for instruction purposes. I'm importing is a Gmail, and also I'm importing I'm importing uh, date time from the date time module, although this is not strictly necessary. And all I'm saying is first I create uh, the variable now, which contains uh, the the time uh, the current time when the email is sent. Then with an F string, I say email off now. You will see why. Uh, I just put it into the subject of the email. Uh, I initiate the Gmail session. And last, I send an email to this recipient with this subject. So email of plus the time when it's sent. And then in the body, I just 
put this sentence, but I could have written anything really. Uh, so that's all. I'm already done with the Python script. I can close this now. And um, as I said, uh, the project is not Git tracked yet. So I have to go through all the steps now for you. So first one, I will initiate Git tracking. Now you can see that there is this Git master uh, in blue and red, meaning it's Git tracked. But if I check whether I'm linked to some uh, repo, obviously the answer is no. Yeah. Okay, so what I need to do now is log in to Heroku if not already done. Usually you would get this sentence when you do so, and this opens a browser. You just log in. Okay, it now says I'm logged in. I can uh, close this. Now I will create an app. I just here I just type Heroku create. I really don't need to um, to tailor the name if I don't want to because basically nobody will see it as this is not a web app like we did before. It's just uh, a process that runs in the background and uh, you know therefore I don't really care about the name but uh, actually Heroku provides great names. So here it is. We have an ancient oasis and then some digits. So now our, our app is empty, but it's, it's there. Now I will add everyone to the party and then commit all of them. And finally push it. Okay, now as you know, it's going to, it could take up to a few minutes, although here I think only a few seconds. It's currently pushing it to, um, to Heroku. Once it's done, I'm going to uh, actually uh, browse Heroku and go into the app um, and define the, uh, the scheduler settings. So it's quick because there is only one module here. I think there are just a few seconds left now, yeah. So it's a very light project, you see, 60 megabytes. Uh, to give you an idea, you, can, you can't, I mean, currently, as of uh, May 2021, you can't uh, push TensorFlow because TensorFlow itself is already too heavy for a free plan. That may change. Things change quickly, but for now, you, you can't, for example. But here we have a light project and I can see where we are now done. So I will now go to Heroku here. Um, I'm on my Heroku page. You can see I, currently I have three apps, but now I will refresh the page and we should see our ancient Oasis project. Let's check. Yep, it's here. Perfect. I will, I will click on it and I will start configuring uh, the scheduler. So, let's see. It's an add-on, so I, there are many. I start typing scheduler. I can see there are several possibilities. I will go for the advanced scheduler here and the free plan. So it's just a trial free plan. Don't worry, you won't be charged, although you may be required um, to fill your credit card details at this stage, but I already did, so this is why I'm not prompted to do so here. Now, advanced scheduler, I click on this, and this is the page where I can, you know, set everything up. I create a first trigger, I can give it a name, like send email, and the command here is the exact command that you would type in the shell. Um, to, to run the, the, main, the main Python script. So in my case, that would be Python um, scheduled, scheduled underscore script dot py. Select the time zone that may be useful for you. In this case, I don't really need this. However, I do need to select the type and it's a recurring type. 
Um, now, the way to actually uh, program the schedule uh, is twofold. You could use a cron expression because what we're doing is similar to a cron job. You could also go uh, for a schedule helper and it's super simple DUI way to program it. You just select the unit of time. In my case, to see results quickly, I will select every minute. I mean, unit of time a minute and actually every minute. I could choose every one minute, two minutes, up to 30 minutes, uh, thanks to the advanced scheduler. The, the simple Heroku scheduler offers less possibilities. So every one minute, and just for your information, I will now show the advanced options, but I won't need them now. You could, for example, select a timeout. And I think there is also an offset. You could, I think, uh, set an offset. Okay, I'm ready. I will now, I will, I will now save this and I land on this uh, trigger page where I can monitor that everything's going fine. Like, for example, here, this will fill little by little every time uh, an email is sent. I will now head to my uh, Gmail account. You can see I received an email regarding the advanced scheduler, warm ocean stuff. This is done whenever you, you actually create the trigger and they kindly uh, direct you to the dev center for the advanced scheduler. It's really well documented, so quite simple. And now I will go back to my uh, unread messages and hopefully I will see my own email. Yep, it's here. So um, it works exactly as expected. You can see the body here. Hey dude, this is your schedule doing its job and remember, um, if I if I cut my Python file, you can see this is exactly what I wrote here at the bottom. And remember, the subject of the email was called email object, and this variable contains um, an f string which says email of plus daytime dot now. And this is exactly what I have: email of plus the current date. So it works perfectly up oh, and you could see now pop up the second email. I will wait for a third one and I, I think it will be enough to convince you how easy and how super powerful this is. I will just wait for the last one before calling it a day. So, and by the way, as you could see here, unlike um, making a web app, this does not require any proc file. You may see a proc file starting worker stuff, which you don't need it. Uh, this is like, I think the minimal, the minimum package you need to, to run it. And actually, if, if I had um, made a project on some other topic, not requiring any outside modules and not requiring any credentials, I could actually push only a single Python script and run it in the cloud. Okay, now here it is. You, you see, third email, it works perfectly. I think it's a good time now to say uh, goodbye and see you in the next video, guys.